Hi everybody, welcome to a special On The Spectrum Kitchen. Today is the first day of fall and I'm gonna make my autumn blowout cupcake. It is a brown sugar cinnamon cake filled with apple compote that's been cooked down in apple cider, topped with caramel buttercream, garnished with a little bit of the glaze from the compote, and decorated with an orange chocolate leaf. It's a perfect summer treat, especially with the cider. Alrighty, let's get baking. Now, first things first, preheat your oven to 350 and make sure you have some cupcake liners ready. Now, we're going to start with dry ingredients. Take a small, medium sized bowl and put in a 1 2 3rd cup of flour. Alright, and we're going to take 2 teaspoons of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Hmm. I got stuck. Oh! Sorry, my cat wanted to make an appearance. Where was I? Oh, yeah! The baking soda. I was getting some out of the sand left in here, though. Again, I apologize for my cat. I guess he's so hungry. Uh, i for this. Now you take half a teaspoon of salt. And half a teaspoon of cinnamon. One of the key ingredients. Now, grab your whisk. And just whisk until combined. Just combine enough, anyway. All right. Next, grab a medium or large bowl, depending on how big you got them. Oh, these are the wet ingredients, by the way. I'm sorry. And we're going to take half a cup of room temperature, temperature butter. Next, we're going to take one cup of light or dark brown sugar that's been packed. You can use whatever you want. I'm using light. Now, packed means it's been let me show you. tucked in tight to the measuring cup like this. Add it. If it crumbles, I'm going to spawn. And we're going to beat until combined. all the way, just beat it enough so you don't see any plums of butter, which I don't see, which is good. I am so sorry. I guess my cat wanted to be on camera. At least you got to see him, and I hope you didn't get a view of his butt. Uh, anyway, now that the brown sugar and the butter is beaten and combined, we're going to add two room temperature eggs one at a time. And we're gonna beat within each addition. Oh. Now, if the yolk broke, kind of like mine did, that's okay. Now we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. My hands are shaking a little bit, so I apologize. 
All right. And then we're going to add a one third cup of room temperature sour cream. And get it out. All right, I got enough of it out. That's fine. And we're going to add a one fourth cup of vegetable oil. And we're going to mix until combined. All right. Now, real quick, I'm just going to show you what the batter is looking like so far. I don't know if you can see because I'm trying to avoid spilling, but it's nice and brown. Okay. Next, we are going to alternate. Please forgive me because I forgot when I came up. Hashtag error. We're going to add a three fourth cup of buttermilk. Well, correction, we're going to alternate adding buttermilk, three fourth cups of buttermilk to be exact, with the flour mixture. So basically that means you do the flour mixture first. You mix. Not all the way, but enough. And you add the three fourth cup of buttermilk. Not all of it, but some of it. And you need to keep doing that until they're all gone. Alrighty, now we are ready to fill the cupcake liners. Now you're going to want to fill like two thirds of the way. If you're, if you don't know how that works, just do like a, use a ice cream scooper or a one fourth measuring cup. Can't believe falls here already. It seems like just yesterday I just started starting the kitchen. But I gotta admit, fall or autumn is my all-time favorite season. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's in the Goldilocks zone. It's perfect. Seriously perfect. And I have so many fall memories of when I was a kid of jumping into leaf piles, seeing the beautiful colors on a trail side when you're in the car. And in Michigan, there was this cider mill I used to go to, I forgot the name, but I went every single year as a kid. And I hope the pack has stopped reaching out to my children one day. Now I prepared an extra cupcake liner just in case, and I'm glad I did, because I still have some batter. It's looking good. And I gave it a little taste. Not bad. You could taste the cinnamon. I don't know. For some reason, it kind of reminds me of a snickerdoodle. Which I will make one day. Now, I have one little thing to tell you guys. If you help me get to 50 subscribers, I will go live. I will cook and or bake. You tell me what you want to see me make when I go live. And while doing so, I will be answering questions. And maybe trying some new foods in the process. You just let me know in the comments. And I really hope you can help me. Alright. I still have a little batter left. So. I'm just going to add just a little bit right there. And a little bit right there. Alright, set this aside. I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit, just like so. Let me, I forgot to say this. Let me know in the comments what you like to do every fall. Now we're gonna pop these into the oven and they're gonna bake for about 18 to 22 minutes, depending on how powerful your oven is. So I recommend watching them.
You'll know when they're ready when a toothpick or a cake poker or tester comes out clean or if they're springy to the touch. All right, now the cupcakes are done and they're cooling. Let me show you what the batch looks like. This one's completely cool, but the other one's not. It's look good. It kind of looks like vanilla, but they're brown sugar. I just use light one, that's why they're so confusing. Next, we're gonna make that apple compote. Now, you're gonna grab four apples that have been washed, peeled, cored, and diced. Now, I forgot to peel my apples, but you know that's okay. Maybe my friends will like some crunch. Now, they should all look like this. And we're gonna take one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And we're gonna mix them up until combined. You can stir them or toss them. I might do a little batch and toss, but I kind of can't say. I don't know what it is about apple and cinnamon that they should go so well together. Now you can use any kind of apple you want. I'm using honey crisp, crisp which by the way is my all time favorite apple. All right, toss. Now we're gonna set this aside for a minute. Next, we're gonna turn on the heat. Oh, I forgot. Handle your apples and cinnamon in the biggest bowl you could find. They're not too big. Turn on the heat to, let's see, medium. We'll start with, and we'll go from there. Find the biggest pot you can find, because I'm not sure how much room there be in a little pan or pot. Next, we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter. Now, make sure you stir them around. Now, you're kind of in a rush to get the butter in your mouth. You can just turn it up a little bit. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, this is an apple. For a minute there, I thought that was a piece of the peeling. Okay, now my butter is almost melted. If it starts to turn a little brown, eh, it's okay. A little brown butter never for anybody, right? That's actually optional now that I think about it. You want to use brown butter instead of regular butter? I bet it. I don't care. It's your choice. All right. It is pretty much melted. Make sure you get it all around the pan. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of brown sugar until we're going to start until it's dissolved. You can use whatever kind of brown sugar you want, but lighter dark. Like I said, I am going to use the lights because it's for the fun guy. And it doesn't have to be packed this time. I just had them already. You'll know when it's dissolved when it's all like melted and stuff. You know? All right, I say it's all the nuts. I can just pour a little piece with probably just a quick one. That's okay. You looking at one, right? All right, it's like it's ball. Now we're gonna add the apples. Oh, nice nibble. Make sure your pan's not too hot. Sorry, my cat jumped off the table and it scared me. Mix it all around. Sorry, too loud. I'll turn it on. And we're going to add two cups of apple cider. All right. Now, stirring occasionally, we're going to let it simmer for about 15 minutes or so. Make sure you stir occasionally and keep a close eye on it. And save some of the glaze because we're going to be huge. By glaze, I mean the liquid from the cider. And by the side of what I mean is the compote, which has the cider. I found copper. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and we're going to let it simmer for about 15 minutes while stirring occasionally. 
And while it's cooling, we're gonna get start. We'll start on the caramel buttercreams. All right, the compo is pretty much cooled by now. Now you're gonna make the caramel buttercream. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're gonna take one cup or two sticks of room temperature butter. Now, for the caramel, you can use either store-bought or your own or favorite recipe. I'm using homemade. All right, now we're gonna cream it until it's combined. Well, cream it enough until it's like and fluffy, I mean. And it'll take a few minutes, so don't rush it. The butter has been creamed enough, I guess. If you feel unsure, you can put it in a minute or two. I gotta find my spatula. I apologize for the sounds of my barking dogs. Um, what next? Uh, next, we're gonna add four cups of powdered sugar. Now we're gonna add them one cup at a time. Taste after each each addition. And if the sweetness has been reached, stop. So, layman's terms, it kind of doesn't really matter, I guess. All right, we'll just mix it until it's combined. All right, now as I was wrapping up the mixing, I realized I skipped the step. When you cream the butter, we add the caramel and then we combine. My bad. But, uh, oh well, improvising never comes to one. I think. Anyway, add a half a cup of caramel. It's not as easy as you think making it, by the way. Well, if you're having trouble with the frosting consistency with the butter, I want liquid water, but I think the caramel is actually pulping in my face. We did not know if I was having a little bit That will happen every once in a while. Okay, it's starting to look good now. Next, we are going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Next, we're going to add a pinch of salt. And we're going to add one to two tablespoons of either of, ugh, I'm sorry, one to two tablespoons of either heavy cream or, or milk. I'm going to do a heavy cream this time. You can do whatever you want depending on the thickness. Just add more if it's not thick enough. And we're going to mix until combined. And as you can see, I still can't find the rotor on the turntable of butter. But uh, one of these days I'll find it. I'll get a new stand mix and I'll get Alright, now it's finally time to assemble. Now, make sure you cut your the center of the cupcakes in nice size circles like these. You can either use the sharpest knife you've got or a core, which is something like this. It helps you with the coring and stuff. You know what I mean. Alright. Now we're going to take like a spoonful or two of the combo that I forgot to peel and I really hope the crunchiness is not a problem. Make sure you put them in real gently. And don't cut the hole all the way because it will just leave the bottom really spot if you wish. And if you like that, then who am I to judge? All 
All right, they're almost filled. Now you'll have like loads of it left, and if you don't want to throw it out, do whatever you want. Then make a fritter, make a pie, do whatever you want, really. All right. Oh, a little bit of it is filled. That's okay. Easy fix. Now I meant to show you this. This is what the combo was supposed to look like. Now I'm just gonna set it up for a few minutes because we're still gonna use the liquid. There's still plenty of cider left. Now, if you have it, fill a pipe meat bag with the big star tip. All right. Just want to make sure it works, and it does. Sometimes, if you overfill the bag, it'd be almost impossible to pipe it on. Okay, so full disclosure, as I was taking the cupcakes out of the tin, which I should have done in the first place, some of the frosting started to slide off, so I just popped them into the fridge for a couple of minutes. If that happens, that just means your buttercream got a little warm. It's not your cupcake's fault. So just leave them in there, and just once you're done, you can decorate them, and they'll be ready. All right, now that's settled, we are going to now move glaze the rest of these cupcakes. I glazed a few just to see how it would hold off camera. And it looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of apple in there. That's nah, okay. All right, now. So on the like so we're just gently apply. And give it my hands a little shaky right now. It helps actually. Maybe a little hard to get out, but there we go. Here we go. All right, looking good. Last but not least, the autumn leaves. <laughs> Now, I actually made these off camera as well. They're a little tiny, but it was all I had on hand. These ones are a little bigger, so this works. Hey, okay. and they have any extra leaves? Go for it, you know. And here, you, and there you have it, an autumn blowout. Some of the glaze for some, but that's okay. Thank you for watching today's special on the Spectrum Kitchen. If you like what you saw, like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Please follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'll have the recipe in the description but down below so you can make it yourself. And remember, if, I, if you help me get to 50 subscribers, I go live. You tell me what you would like me to make or bake and or bake. Tell me you have any questions prepared because I will answer them while I am making it. And let me know if there's any food that you want to try, want, want me to try. Just put it all in the comments. Have a good day everybody and happy fall!